In the movie Interstellar, Cooper faces a crisis on Earth due to crop failures from climate change, driving humanity to the brink. They find a mysterious wormhole near Saturn, possibly made by advanced beings, offering new planets. Cooper's team embarks on a thrilling journey, humanity's last hope. Some suggest that the movie's concept of living inside a black hole might not be entirely fictional, sparking thoughts about its plausibility, while others have argued that the movie is so scientific that it should be taught in schools. In reality, the prevailing belief is that anything entering a black hole is trapped beyond escape. But a new study suggests that this might not be the case after all. When it comes to our understanding of the universe, the 20th century was full of surprises. A little over a hundred years ago, we thought that the Milky Way galaxy was home to everything we could see in the sky. We thought the universe was static, unchanging, and possibly eternal, governed by Newton's law of universal gravitation. All of that changed dramatically in the span of a few short years. Einstein's general relativity superseded Newton's gravitation, showing us the relationship between matter and energy and the fabric of space-time. According to his equations, the universe couldn't be static, but must be changing over time. A fact confirmed by the discovery of the expanding universe. His theory also predicted the existence of black holes, which were later discovered, detected, and even imaged directly. This led to a wild but still speculative idea that perhaps our universe was birthed from a black hole and that we may be living in a black hole. Is it conceivable that our universe originated from a black hole in a larger parent universe? And could new universes emerge whenever a new black hole forms? Well, keep on watching to find out. Let's rewind the clock. Before humans existed, before Earth formed, before the sun ignited, before galaxies arose, before light could even shine, there was the Big Bang. But what about before that? Many physicists say there is no before that. Time began ticking, they insist, at the instant of the Big Bang, and pondering anything earlier isn't in the realm of science. We'll never understand what pre-Big Bang reality was like, or what it was formed of, or why it exploded to create our universe, as such notions are beyond human understanding. But a few unconventional scientists disagree. These physicists theorize that a moment before the Big Bang, all the mass and energy of the nascent universe was compacted into an incredibly dense yet finite speck. Let's call it the seed of a new universe. This seed is thought to have been almost unimaginably tiny, possibly trillions of times smaller than any particle humans have been able to observe. And yet it's a particle that can spark the production of every other particle, not to mention every galaxy, solar system, planet, and person. So how is such a seed created? One idea, bandied about for several years, notably by Nikodem Poplowski of the University of New Haven, is that the seed of our universe was forged in the ultimate kiln, likely the most extreme environment in all of nature, inside a black hole. But how do these black holes come about? Well, black holes are expected to form via two distinct channels. According to the first pathway, they are stellar corpses, so they form when massive stars die. Stars whose birth masses are above roughly eight to 10 times the mass of our sun when they exhaust all their fuel, their hydrogen, they explode and die, leaving behind a very compact, dense object, a black hole. The resulting black hole that is left behind is referred to as a stellar mass black hole, and its mass is of the order of a few times the mass of the sun. Not all stars leave behind black holes. Stars with lower birth masses leave behind a neutron star or a white dwarf. Another way that black holes form is from the direct collapse of gas, a process that is expected to result in more massive black holes, with a mass ranging from 1,000 times the mass of the Sun up to even 100,000 times the mass of the Sun. This channel circumvents the formation of the traditional star and is believed to operate in the early universe and produce more massive black hole seeds. However, a common misconception comes between black holes and wormholes. Wormholes can be thought of as tunnels that connect two separate points in space and time. There's a belief that inside black holes there might be a wormhole, a tear in space-time. This wormhole could serve as a gateway to another point in space-time, possibly in a different universe. 
Forty years ago, Stephen Hawking shocked the scientific establishment with his discovery that black holes aren't black. Classical physics implies that anything falling through the horizon of a black hole can never escape. But Hawking showed that black holes continually emit radiation once quantum effects are taken into account. Unfortunately, for typical astrophysical black holes, the temperature of this radiation is far lower than that of the cosmic microwave background, meaning detecting them is beyond current technology. Hawking's calculations are perplexing. If a black hole continually emits radiation, it will continually lose mass, eventually evaporating. Hawking realized that this implied a paradox. If a black hole can evaporate, the information about it will be lost forever. This means that even if we could measure the radiation from a black hole, we could never figure out it was originally formed. This violates an important rule of quantum mechanics that states information cannot be lost or created. Another way to look at this is that Hawking radiation poses a problem with determinism for black holes. Determinism implies that the state of the universe at any given time is uniquely determined by its state at any other time. This is how we can trace its evolution both astronomically and mathematically through quantum mechanics. This means that the loss of determinism would have to arise from reconciling quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of gravity, a notoriously hard problem and the ultimate goal for many physicists. Black hole physics provides a test for any potential quantum gravity theory. Whatever your theory is, it must explain what happens to the information recording a black hole's history. It took two decades for scientists to come up with a solution. They suggested that the information stored in a black hole is proportional to its surface area in two dimensions, rather than its volume in three dimensions. This could be explained by quantum gravity, where the three dimensions of space could be reconstructed from a two-dimensional world without gravity, much like a hologram. Shortly afterwards, string theory, the most studied theory of quantum gravity, was shown to be holographic in this way. Using holography, we can describe the evaporation of the black hole in the two-dimensional world without gravity, for which the usual rules of quantum mechanics apply. This process is deterministic, with small imperfections in the radiation encoding the history of the black hole. So, holography tells us that information is not lost in black holes, but tracking down the flaw in Hawking's original arguments has been surprisingly hard. The defining feature of a black hole is the existence of an event horizon, a boundary that tells a very different story for an object outside of it versus one inside of it. Outside of a black hole's event horizon, any object will experience its gravitational effects, as the space will be curved by the black hole's presence, but it can still escape. If it moves fast enough or accelerates quickly enough in the proper direction, it won't necessarily fall into the black hole, but could break free of its gravitational influence. Once an object crosses over to the other side of the event horizon, however, it's immediately doomed to be subsumed into the black hole's central singularity. Because of how severely the fabric of space-time is curved inside a black hole, an infalling object will reach the singularity within seconds of crossing the event horizon, growing the black hole's mass in the process. To someone located outside the event horizon, the black hole appears to form, gain mass, and grow over time. What does this have to do with our universe, though? If you were to take all of the known, measurable forms of matter and radiation in the observable universe, you'd have to add up all of the following. Normal matter, made from protons, neutrons, and electrons. Neutrinos, ghostly fundamental particles that rarely interact with normal matter. Dark matter, which dominates the universe's mass, but has so far eluded direct detection efforts. Photons, or particles of light which carry energy from every electromagnetic event throughout cosmic history, and gravitational waves, which are created every time a mass moves and accelerates through the curved fabric of space-time. At the farthest limits of what our instruments can detect, we can see up to about 46 billion light-years away in all directions. If you add up all the energy from all of these forms throughout the entire observable universe, you can arrive at an equivalent mass for the universe using Einstein's most famous relation, E equals to mc squared. Consider this. If the entire universe were condensed into a single point, what would occur? 
The answer is the same as if you compressed any significant amount of mass or energy into a single point. It would create a black hole. What's fascinating about Einstein's theory of gravity is that when this mass or energy isn't electrically charged and lacks rotation, the black hole's size is solely determined by its total mass, known as its Schwarzschild radius. Remarkably, the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole with the mass of all the matter in the observable universe is almost exactly equal to the observed size of the visible universe. That realization, on its own, seems like a remarkable coincidence, raising the question of whether our universe might somehow be the interior of a black hole. But that's only the beginning of the story. In the mid-1960s, a discovery was made that revolutionized our concept of the universe. A uniform, omnidirectional bath of low-energy radiation appeared from all locations in the sky. This radiation had the same temperature in all directions, now determined to be 2.725 K, just a few degrees above absolute zero. The radiation had a practically perfectly black body spectrum, as though it had a hot thermal origin, and appeared identical to within one part in, 30,000 no matter where you looked in the sky. This radiation, originally called the primeval fireball and now known as the cosmic microwave background, represented critical evidence that our universe is expanding and cooling because it was hotter and denser in the past. The farther back we extrapolate, the smaller, more uniform, and more compact things are. Going back, this picture of the hot Big Bang appears to approach a singularity, the same condition found at the central interiors of black holes, a location where densities, temperatures, and energies are so extreme that the laws of physics themselves break down. When you look at the equations that govern a black hole, there's something remarkable that happens as well. If you start just outside the event horizon and escape to an infinite distance away from the black hole, you'll find that your distance, r, goes from r, the Schwarzschild radius, to infinity. On the other hand, if you start just inside the event horizon and track your distance from the black hole to the central singularity, you'll find that the same distance, r, instead goes from r, the Schwarzschild radius, to zero, zero. Big deal, right? No, it is a big deal for the following reason. If you examine all the properties of space outside of a black hole's event horizon, from r to, and compare them to all the properties of space inside the black hole's event horizon, from r to zero, they are identical at every single point. All you have to do is replace the distance, r, with its reciprocal, one, r, or more accurately, replace all instances of r or r with r r, and you'll find that the black hole's interior is mathematically identical to the black hole's exterior. As our understanding of the universe has improved and been refined over the past few decades, two discoveries have rocked the foundations of cosmology. The first was cosmic inflation. Instead of arising from a singularity, it now appears that the universe was set up by a rapid, relentless state of constant exponential expansion that preceded the hot Big Bang. It's as though there was some sort of field that provided energy inherent to space itself, causing the universe to inflate, and only when inflation ended did the hot Big Bang begin. The second was dark energy. As the universe expands and becomes less dense, distant galaxies start to recede from us at an accelerating rate. Once again, albeit with a much smaller magnitude, the universe behaves as though there's some sort of energy inherent to space itself, refusing to dilute even as the expansion of space continues. For as long as inflation and dark energy have both been around, people have speculated that there might be a connection. What's the possible connection? Once more, black holes may hold the answer. They accumulate mass as matter falls in and radiate away mass through hawking radiation. As the event horizon's size changes, could this alter the energy woven into space for an observer inside it? Is it conceivable that what we see as cosmic inflation signifies the birth of our universe from an immensely massive black hole? And could dark energy have ties to black holes in some way as well? Does this imply that when astrophysical black holes form in our universe, each one generates its own baby universe within? These ideas have existed for decades but lack a definitive or provable conclusion. Nonetheless, 
Numerous models and concepts are in circulation, and this train of thought remains captivating to researchers of black holes, thermodynamics, entropy, general relativity, and the universe's origins and destiny. Regrettably, every physical model presented so far has fallen short of achieving three key objectives. One, recreating all the established successes, such as already observed phenomena explained by the inflationary hot Big Bang. Two, clarifying or accounting for observed phenomena beyond the capabilities of the prevailing theory. Three, formulating new testable predictions that differ from those made by the current leading model. There's a lot to like about the idea that there's a connection between black holes and the birth of universes from both physical and mathematical points of view. It's plausible that there's a connection between the birth of our universe and the creation of an extremely massive black hole from a universe that existed before our own. It's plausible that every black hole that's been created in our universe has given rise to a new universe within it. What's missing, unfortunately, is the key step of a uniquely identifiable signature that could tell us whether this is the case or not. That's one of the most difficult steps for any theoretical physicist, to determine the imprint of a new idea on our observable universe, distinguishing that new idea from our old, prevailing ones. Until we successfully take that step, work will likely continue on these ideas, but they will only remain speculative hypotheses. We don't know whether our universe was birthed by the creation of a black hole, but at this point, it's a tantalizing possibility that we would be foolish to rule out. This video ends here. What do you think about it? And do you think we could actually live inside a black hole? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it. For now, goodbye, and I'll see you next time on the channel.